Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Check out our brand new app and get access to our new pharmacology and med surge mastery courses. Plus, a massive quiz bank loaded with detailed rationales to test your knowledge. Join for free. Click the link in our description below. Now for lower respiratory drugs, we have two teams, the BAM team and the SLAM team. So BAM is for our bronchodilators that act to dilate the bronchi in the lungs, and SLAM is our anti-inflammatory agents to soothe the inflammation. So guys, let's start with our bronco team, BAM. First off, we have B for beta-2 agonists. These guys end in butyrol, like L-butyrol and levalbutyrol. So guys, just remember the B in butyrol is used for brutal asthma attacks. Since it's the first drug we use during severe asthma attacks. And it's the fastest acting bronchodilator. So the NCLEX keyword here is, it's the only rescue inhaler during acute asthma attacks to be used before steroid inhalers. That's always a common NCLEX question. Now guys, big caution here. Selimetrol is a beta-2 agonist as well, but it's a slower acting, not a rescue inhaler. So not to be used during an acute asthma attack since it ends in terol and not buterol. Now it's used commonly with a combination of steroids for longer term control of moderate to severe asthma. Now a common NCLEX question is, do not use fluticasone or selimetrol for the first signs of acute asthma attack. So during acute asthma attacks, guys, we give three drugs. And to be honest, sequence is key on the NCLEX. So use the memory trick AIM for the acute asthma attack. A for albuterol, which is always used first during brutal asthma and not selimetrol, which is the slower acting one. I is for ipratropium, always used second, which we'll be covering next. And M is for methoprednisolone, brand name Sulimetrol, which is our steroid always to be used last since steroids act so slow. And it has the word prednisolone, which kind of sounds like prednisone. So that's how you know it's a steroid. Now for the mechanism of action, these are beta-2 agonists, which activate beta-2 in the lungs, which dilates the bronchi, resulting in increased airflow. But it also activates beta-1 in the heart, which makes the heart go crazy fast. So the common side effect is a rapid heart rate. So just think albuterol amps up the body. Now expected side effects for albuterol, just think of the three T's. T for tachycardia and palpitations, T for tremor, and T for tossing and turning at night. Keyword for exams are insomnia and difficulty sleeping. So teach patients not to take it at bedtime. And guys, don't let the NCLEX trick you. Commonly chosen distractors, not constipation, that's a side effect for opioid pain meds, and not hives, that's totally an allergic reaction, not expected finding. Now patient education, a little side note for asthmatic patients. We always avoid beta blockers that end in LOL, like atenolol, which can cause bronchospasms. And avoid NSAIDs like naproxen and ibuprofen, which can worsen asthma. Now, during an attack or a severe asthma attack, we instruct patients to take two to four puffs every 20 minutes for three rounds. Now, the big key point here, guys, write this down. If it doesn't work after three doses, then you notify the HCP. And how do we evaluate if the med is effective? Well, we have decrease in respiratory rate. Example, 34 respirations go down to 24. And guys, the oxygen saturation is at least 90% or higher. Now, a common HESI question asks about albuterol nebulizer, some expected findings after treatment. Well, there's going to be increased productive cough, reports of decreased anxiety, as well as mild bilateral hand tremors, guys. These are totally normal. Now, as far as administration, make sure you shake it before you take it. So remember, come on, shake, shake it. Come, come on, shake, shake it. <laughs> now, guys, the key point here is always make sure to shake it well. Then you breathe all the way out, push the inhaler, inhale and hold for a few seconds. Then exhale. Now, if we're taking with steroids too, 
The correct order is albuterol first to bronchodilate and open the lungs, and steroids second to get all that powder down into the deep lungs. Now, as far as cleaning the meter-dosed inhaler, we always clean the mouthpiece one to two times per week with warm water. Now, this does not have to be done after every use. Common NCLEX question. Only steroids are washed after every use, so guys just think steroid inhalers go right in the sink after each use. Now, a common question on exit exams. They'll present a patient with severe asthma with their vital signs all screwed up. And they'll ask, which medication would you give? Select all that apply. So guys, remember, during asthma attacks, we give AIM, albuterol, ipratropium, and methylpredazolone. So guys, our correct options here are two for albuterol inhaler, three nebulizer ipratropium, and five IV methylpredazolone. Now our next drug is A for anticholinergics, ending in tropium like iprotropium or teotropium. Now these guys dry the body out. So think tropium, you can't pee with them with your peums. Used for moderate to severe asthma and COPD. It's a longer acting bronchodilator that reduces secretions and commonly given in combination with albuterol. Now they're used second in line during a severe or acute asthma attack. Remember our acronym AIM. A for albuterol first, ipratropium second, and methylprednisolone third, guys. That is our brand name, Sulimetrol. Always our steroids are given last since steroids act slow. Now the mechanism of action is that it blocks secretion, so you can't see, pee, spit, or sh poop. Now this is called anticholinergic effects. And I remember by saying anticholinergic or antisecretions, since they block acetylcholine. And again, you can simply say tropium means you can't pee with them. So the obvious side effect is dry mouth and hoarseness. And we teach patients these key points. To treat the dry mouth and throat for all anticholinergics, we use gum and candy and we also drink fluids. Now the big key point here and the big test tip is no swallowing teotropium capsules, guys. Put the capsule inside the inhaler device and then inhale. Never swallow the pill. This came up on both the HESI and ATI exams. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys. See you next time.